All right, good evening everyone, and we are back. So last time, uh, we took our dry rye berries, we ran them through the Instant Pot for uh, about 13 minutes. Uh, pressure cooked those bad boys to get them nice and hydrated. Um, after that, I set them out on a tray, let them uh, kind of get dry to the touch. Then I bagged them up and honestly threw them in the refrigerator overnight till I was ready to do stuff then tonight. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're, we're kind of ready to go. I have my half pint jars pulled out. I got a total of seven because that is what ultimately will fit inside the Instant Pot. Um, but to talk a little bit about what we do here, um, I filled each of them up about mm, two thirds to three quarters of the way full. Um, it's suppose you don't have to, but you if you later on decide you want to shake them, but we're getting ahead of ourselves, you'll have the room to do that. Um, each of the lid is prepped in such a way, um, so you can see we have, I've made two holes in them, focus, I made two holes in them, um, this top one up here is just a breather hole, and it has two plies of the micropore tape on it, the micropore tape just being like this 3M, literally, micropore medical tape, um, that's available in probably just about any sort of pharmacy, and then the other is the injection port. And that's basically a second hole filled with high temp RTV. And you can get this at uh, auto parts stores, probably automotive sections of your uh, big box store. Um, one of those, probably one of those two, probably hardware store. And then obviously the other materials you'll need will be jars and lids and big box store. Um, maybe hardware stores too these days. Um, uh, yeah, the purpose of the micropore tape, it's a, to allow gas exchange of your gradually colonizing mycelium um, to, yeah, it, it can vent gases or allow, I guess, gases in if and as required. Um, but the weave or non-weave of the port, uh, this tape is dense enough to keep basically wild strains of yeast and other sort of like uh, bacterial uh, things kind of falling in um, that can cause an infection in the grains. Um, before the mycelium that you inject can take root. So it more or less gives time for the type of, I guess, the, yeah, my, mycelium that you want to actually colonize to do so. Um, and honestly, if you probably just left this sterilized with just the lids on as is right now, it probably wouldn't, um, but that's fine. So I think we talked about the jars, talked about uh, how we did the lids. Um, at this point, um, I'm ready to put the, uh, the foil back on it. I guess the purpose of this is largely to keep uh, the moisture from the, the steam cycle from um, getting deep in, getting inside your grains and maybe making it too wet. More or less what I do is I uh, push it down, kind of snug it up. And then I tighten the lids most of the way, then I back it off a little bit so it's not truly sealed. Um, it's just enough to, once again, I think, yeah, just try and keep some steam out of it if we can, or a lot of water, which we certainly can. Um, inside the Instant Pot itself, we I put there's some water in the bottom that will be able to boil and steam. Um, since the Instant Pot really doesn't lose much in the way of water, we don't need a ton. I mean, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could fill it up over the bottoms of the jars. Mm, not necessary. Um, but yeah, so they will fit seven half pints. Um, yep. Get that bad boy on. Um, going off of the other conventional wisdom of mycology of... Uh, using a 15 PSI stovetop um, pressure cooker like the Prestos or whatever. Um, it was always like, well, I'm going to stop you for now. Like, oh, do, do 90 minutes at 15 PSI and then your stuff is sure to be sterilized. Um, 15 PSI, the kind of the steam on the steam tables that more or less accounts or amounts to a boiling point of water or steam temperature of about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the Instant Pot does about, I th want to think, 10.3, 10.4 PSI. That basically means the boiling point of water is just a little bit lower. 
that works out to 243 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, looking at kind of like the food safety um, microbial kill charts, honestly, anything that's um, hitting 250 F that could really infect food, um, it's going to be killed in largely the same amount of time, and honestly, exactly the same amount of time as something that hits 243 degrees F. Um, I'm sure there's some extremophiles that uh, live in thermal vents that can take, obviously, more, but <laughs> we don't really have to worry about them because they don't really live in the open air. So, um, but that said, for people who were actually concerned about being a little bit deficient, um, my rule of thumb, and I don't really think it hurts anything, for running in an instant pot, just add 30 minutes. So a good 120 minutes, two hours, we turn the keep warm off, and at this point, we don't really have anything else to do. So a stovetop pressure cooker, you, you do want to keep an eye on it. This, you set it, you forget it. Um, I'm just going to go about the rest of my evening, um, and it's going to run. When it hits that two-hour mark, then it's just going to shut itself off and just come down in temperature. And I'll be able to come back and uh, take my sterilized jars out and uh, work them when I need to or when I want to super easy that's why i am an advocate of the instant pot even though they are obviously smaller than a uh, a big uh, conventional pressure cooker but hey convenience is worth something to me thanks a lot